I'm your friends, I'm going to try to make this as brief as possible, but for those not familiar, we're going to be using Plotly. And what I'm going to show you how to do is basically how to take this information that you see right before you and how to you wrap text uh, from basically a large or a lot of text in a column, like in this case, the symptom text is from the VAERS Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, and pull it out to where each point data point represents an, an entire case file, at least in reference to the symptom text. What you see here, for example, in the individual is the five symptoms that are normally highlighted in a VAERS uh, symptom report, as well as the symptom text. When I was basically going through a lot of the VAERS uh, data points, the, for example, so much more information is actually incorporated into the symptom text more so than the symptom columns. You, you'll you see what I mean in a little bit. All right, but otherwise, we're going to get to that. Also, too, we're going to do it a couple different ways. For example, here we are trying to analyze the length of the uh, flashy, whatever. It is. I just want to give you an idea on how incredibly fast it is. Uh, on the long range reports, looking for reactions uh, that may have not happened within the first few days. For example, these are 11 days or more. And if we just go to mortality, these are the people unfortunately has succumbed. Please keep in mind, let's be respectful as possible. These are all real people, real events. And then a few other aspects is too, as we go down, um, you know, these are 10 days or more, you get the picture. But I wanna show you how to do all of that as briefly as I possibly can. Our first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna restart the kernel and we're gonna clear all outputs. This way I can walk you through it. Briefly, first thing, we import our modules. Keep in mind this import RE module We'll just take out right now and we'll put it up here. So when I cut and paste it for you, for YouTube, it's easy to see. All right. Also too, what we're going to be utilizing is a module called GC collection. That's garbage collection. And that's going to keep your system running a little faster. And then also to keep in mind the angle brackets. We have a lot of angle brackets uh, in our code. You're going to use AB. Every time you see I use AB on the YouTube, when I basically put the code on the YouTube description, you see AB, that's going to stand for angle bracket. Just take the AB out and throw an angle bracket in. All right, now we are going to basically take our data. Our data is going to come from VAERS itself, the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting from the CDC. All right, we are going to be downloading basically this file, this file, this file. And yes, for 2021, it is 613 megabytes, just for the VAERS data itself. The symptoms, 74, and basically the, the CSV file for the vaccine types, 54 megabytes. That's as of December 10th, and this should be updating pretty soon. But yeah, that's real numbers compared to our other years, which are nowhere near as big as that. But back to our data. All right, it's up there. Keep in mind. Low memory seems to work. It could be imagination. And the encoding, you have to encode this in Latin 1. All right, so here we go. Symptom info, you're going to find a lot of columns, for example, like this right here. Symptom version 1, not necessary, not necessary, not necessary, not necessary, not necessary. So we're going to be dropping a lot of columns which are not required. And here's a little trick as far as dropping columns all at once. Make it a list, put it into the system, and boom. All right, so let's drop it, and then drop it. And these are little tricks, too, as far as speeding up your pandas data frame with the large files. Now we are going to merge our data, and we are going to merge our data, but here we go. See, we have no duplicate columns, so you have none of the syntax in place where you have a duplicate column. But again, you're going to see things like, for example, you can use later on, vax name, vax type, uh, birth defects, uh, number of days, for example, which can be real important, which represents the time from the vax date to the onset date, and then disabled and mortality and so on and so forth, if that plays into it. We're merging our 
data frames outer. We are qualifying our information by taking the vax type and make sure we're just pulling up COVID-19 vaccines and that is it. All right, we are now going to save it as a CSV file. We are going to delete all the other files we merge just because we're just trying to maintain as much memory free as possible. And, and here's the trick. This memory map here, I'm not going to go into details what it is, but this memory map here equals true will speed your system up so substantially, so substantially, you'll love it. But I'm not going to go into details what it is, but however, though, you CSV files, map that memory to true, it's going to make a huge difference. All right, we should be coming up with deleting that by now. Here we go. All right, now this runs really fast. Now what I'm going to do right here is show you the number of duplicate case files. What that really means is one person, for example, they may only be able to have, we look back up here, five symptoms. Well, they may have 20 symptoms. So that forces them to fill out four forms, which gives you the idea, some people will make the mistake and think it's four separate people. No, it's one person that has 20 symptoms. So you gotta get rid of those duplicates. So here we go, and you see right here, look at that. You have 680,993 individual reports put 281,578 duplicates. And if you're into data and you're looking at this from a conspiracy side, that's gonna burn you and your credibility is gonna be brought into questions. So just be very, very cognizant of duplicates. All right, speed things along. Again, once again, just validating COVID-19 to isolate the vaccine type. All right, we are gonna garbage collect. If anything's there, yeah, we are. Here we go. And now, Basically, this is just gonna give you the length of the frames. I don't know why I did that. I may leave that out, but, oh, that's to keep the duplicates out. The no, no dupids, you see what I mean? All right, maximum column width, 5,000. What this is gonna do is this is gonna enable you, you see right here? Instead of simple, the column just being like this, you know, just like that, like you, you saw up here under symptom text. All right. So what we are doing, obviously there's more to it than that. So what we are doing, we're expanding the column to read at least 5,000 characters, all right? So we're making this, the column a little bigger. And once again, uh, no dupids, meaning duplicates, and mortality, yes. We are basically looking at our angle bracket right here. Whoops, let's make sure we run that. There we go. The angle bracket right here, one day or less. That's less than or equal to. And there's our rejects, which you need. Right here, you make the file work. You take in the not a numbers and replace them with N, but we use NumPy so much faster. And plus, it only seems to work with NumPy. So replacing the not a numbers with N. And that's going to be important, for example, if someone, if it says died, instead of saying Y and not a number, it's going to be Y and N. It's going to make it so much easier for your graphing. So here we go. Again, moving through this as fast as I can. There's that. All right. And then we run it. Run it. Boom, boom, boom. And then here is how we wrap the hover text. We are going to wrap it at 100 characters. Here's the trick. We are going to replace the line breaks utilizing Python with HTML breaks because Plotly utilizes HTML. And that enables us to take the hover data box and take all the symptom text and basically insert it into that hover text box. And so you could go through basically data points in a heartbeat and look at each individual one and recognize that these are actually individual people as opposed to accumulated data. And so here we go. We are gonna wrap the text. We are gonna take out the line breaks of Python and replace with HTML breaks. This is going to give us one of our other columns, for example. Uh, we're going to, you'll see what I show that in a second. We're going to see Z-bar. And here we go. Again, don't worry about not catching it. I'll have it cut and pasted for us in the um, in you know the YouTube description. And here we are. This is now how we look at the hover text being wrapped. You see what I mean? There we are. 
And so, for example, that gives you a perfect example of how well it wraps all the way through. Please keep in mind, we are dealing with real data on a real data set from the Vaccine Averse Event Reporting System. So I will reiterate, please be respectful. Uh, but the VAERS data set is an incredible data set to work with, especially for me being an amateur, uh, to help develop and hone our skills. Uh, it is so much better than working on data sets like the Titanic or a sepal plant length or you know bird beaks from the archipelagos or wherever it is. You know what I'm talking about because we all have the same data sets. This various data set from the CDC will probably end up being the new gold standard for basically utilizing information and data extraction techniques for classes for decades to come. So yeah, these are individuals basically which had to come within the day or a day after um, of the inoculation, you know, all the way um, down the line. Yeah, that's, look at the exposure, exposure via breast milk. And again, these have to be validated. So these reports to VARES, not reports coming from VARES. So please keep that in mind. All right, and that's what the day two. And this is, for example, this is the accumulated age and mortality, uh, so on and so forth. But that is, again, that is just within one day of the shot, and you have 1,848 reports to VARES of that type of scenario. All right, again, we are basically replacing the number of numbers with the, um, the end there, you see, as far as going down, and then wrapping the text. And then what we're going to do again, we're going to replace the new line from Python with the basically the HTML break. All right, so here we go. And now we're going to come up with a different type of thing. We're going to be working with a scatter plot. We showed you earlier. And so this right here is going to give a different perspective. Now this plot we're utilizing we're trying to identify long range problems, especially if we look at different patterns in regard to reactions or reports to VARES. And this will give you a pretty good idea what's going on. So here we are, VARES, 11 days or more as of December 20th, 21. And you wanna see how exactly how efficient Plotly is when you do it right. Here we go. Each one of these points, which I'm going over, is actually an individual. And look how fast it pulls up all that data. I'm not doing this to blind you. I'm just giving an idea to show you exactly how incredibly powerful this can be. So we can stop right here. You can read, basically look at the exact, all the reactions reported uh, on that particular individual. Stop right here. Same thing. Now, if we want to look at the mortality of individuals that passed away 11 days afterwards in reference after the vaccine, you look over here. And these are all individuals, for example, you see died equals Y. Vera's ID is correct. And these, the ID doesn't mean that that many reactions just happens to be the idea, uh, idea, the ID. And uh, this is a great, yeah, it's horrible. This, this is a great, great research tool. These are the number of days out. So obviously the further you get out, uh, the basic, the question in reference to what's going on or the validity of the report may be tougher to validate. But as you get closer, um, you know, you get to see exactly what may have happened. And I guarantee it's why I want to show you exactly how to extract the data like I've learned myself again i'm not the best by far i'm just learning just beginning to learn but if i can show you how to wrap the hover text on the plot link uh and utilize the various databases it can yield you a lot of incredible incredible um insight yeah these are freaking horrible i mean yeah these are this freaking horrible uh, but again, 
reports to VARES and not reports coming from VARES. All right, you know what I mean? But these are all records and these are all real people. All right, so let's go through the list. I'm gonna delete this that file because again, we're trying to save space. We are in a garbage collect. You will really like that program, trust me. We're gonna do it again. This time what we are gonna do is we are gonna look a little larger file. We're gonna look at people that have reactions within one day through 10 days. All right, and here we go. Once again, the secret is to wrap the text. Then after wrapping the text, replace the new lines with the line breaks from HTML. Here we go. From the second column for the secondary bar. And let's see how fast this comes up. This is gonna be pretty, well, that was pretty fast. And so this is the mortality within 10 days of the inoculation. And once again, what I'm doing with dealing right here is, for example, your median age. Um, there's your age and reports of mortality each age group within 10 days or less. And basically, again, each one of these is real. And it gives you all the first five symptoms. Again, sometimes these may include uh, more than uh, one, one symptom. And so, for example, if you see a chart like this, there could be 20 different symptoms, 25 different symptoms. Uh, and, and so it may require four or five reports. But these are all real. These are people. They were lives. And so that, so I strongly, strongly recommend that you go through uh, this database with a certain amount of reverence and recognizing that it's just not data you're dealing with, but you're dealing with um, a tragedy. Regardless of what the actual uh, reason may have been, it's still uh, all incredibly, incredibly important. Again, Ralph signing off. Hope you find this information of use. All the information, again, as much as I can, will be on the YouTube under the description. And this gives you a wonderful, wonderful way of how to basically take that hover text and wrap the strings so they don't go across your entire screen. And you'll see it and uh, take it from there. And I hope you find this information of great use. And there's a little bit more code in here than's probably needed, but I just want to get you started. And again, you can improve upon it far better than, you know, than I can power to you. Again, I'm just an amateur, just dredging my way through and learning as I'm going along and picking up some new tricks uh, or discovering some new tricks as time moves forward. Ralph signing off. Catch you all a little bit later on. See you then. Bye.